Yeah, my name again is Chris Morgan. Thank you, David, for introducing me. I'm the new editor of the Lewis Carroll Society's journal, The Night Letter. So I want to send out a message. If you have anything interesting you'd like to submit about Carroll, uh, send it right to me. My email's at the end of this presentation. So my new book is The Pamphlets of Lewis Carroll, Volume 5, Games, Puzzles, and Related Pieces. For about 20 years now, the Lewis Carroll Society has been assembling all of Carroll's 200-plus pamphlets into uniform book editions. So the first four volumes are about math, logic, and politics. The fifth volume that I just completed is about his games and puzzles, and there are over 20, uh, 20 of those pamphlets. And they cover all kinds of topics, castle croquet, puzzles from Wonderland, anagrammatic sonnets, uh, a way to remember things, so on and so forth. We'll go through a few of these in the few minutes that I have. Carol was actually very serious about games and puzzles, and the two Alice books have major game themes. Alice's Adventures, of course, is cards with the Queen of Hearts and so on, and Looking Glass is a surreal chess game. So we'll try to cover some of these. I'm going to show you CLD is Charles Ludwig Dodgson, and that stands for his nose trick, which he loved to carry around with him, and he did this with it, which is uh, <laughs> it's rather painful, but one has to suffer for one's art, I think. By the way, if you want a seat all by yourself during rush hour on a bus or subway, <laughs> you will thank me later. Oh, spoiler alert, it's not actually going through my nose at all. But, so Saul Bobroff made this for me because the originals are virtually impossible to find. That's what it looks like. Saul will sell you one for 40 bucks. They're fun. They're fun, and you really do get seats. Uh, <laughs> this is Carol's circular billiard table design. It has three spots, those small white triangular spots, and three balls. And when I went to the Rosenbach Library in Philadelphia to give a talk about the book, they had actually built one, and you can go and play it. And they're, their wonderful Alice exhibit goes through this May, so if you're in Philly, go check it out. It's wonderful, and it's really quite nice. In the course of my research, I found a totally new, undiscovered Carroll mechanical puzzle that he had designed. And these pages I'm going to show you are from the same pages in, in Princeton that Stuart Moskowitz was looking through in greater detail in his wonderful talk this morning about the 64-65 paradox. So thank you, Stuart, for the plug for the book. Uh, and Carol is actually trying to wrap a string around a cube following various guidelines. Let's take a closer look at it here. So in one case, you're allowed to loop the string around the cube. And he also came up, and there's a detail of uh, an exploded view. And he also came up with a way to do it without crossing the string. So he never published it. It's just on the back of a page in there. Very interesting. He always loved uh, mechanical puzzles. This is one that he carried around with him. It's very rare. Uh, James Dalgetty loaned me a picture of it. It's the only one I think that exists. Uh, croquet. Croquet was a, a fad in the 1860s when Carroll was writing Alice's Adventures. It was a brand new game and everybody was playing it. And uh, it looks like this. It, you take two complete croquet sets. And I think it's the best croquet game there is. It's really wonderful. If you like croquet, I definitely suggest that you check it out. Here's Alice playing croquet with a flamingo. You might be, See, this is familiar from the Alice books. But when he drew Alice's adventures underground and gave it to Alice Little, he drew her playing with an ostrich, oddly enough. But that got changed later on. Carol's most popular pamphlet was doublets. And you still see it today in crossword puzzles, but it's now known as a, as a word ladder. And it's a very simple game. Let me go back to that page. You start with a word like word, and you want to get to the the bottom word, which is game. So you change one letter in word to get another real word, like ward, and then you change another letter and so on until you get to game. The fewer steps you go, the more points you get. And this ran for a long time, and this is my, my favorite, is evolve man from ape. <laughs> that was kind of fun. Ape, r, er, 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 mar, man. I, so these columns in Vanity Fair ran for almost two years. It was very successful. People would enter the contest. And Carol was the, the puzzle master. He loved it. He would have definitely been a blogger today. Now, interestingly, you can do doublets with Chinese ideographs. And Howard Chang in Hong Kong has figured out how to do it. And so here you go. To get from male to female, 
you use addition, substitution, and deletion of the ideographs to get from one to the other. And in fact, it takes six steps to get from tears to smile in English, but only four steps in Chinese. So I thought that was interesting. Donald Knuth is fascinated with doublets and has come up with all sorts of amazing variations. He also used a computer program to calculate all the five-letter words that cannot be transformed into any other word by changing one letter. And he calls these aloof words. Interestingly, one of the aloof words is aloof. Because <laughs> you can't change aloof into any other word. So, I'll get to the next slide here. Carol didn't like English spelling. I assume he didn't like American spelling. So I will close with this quote from one of his Douglas columns. A competitor pleads that odor, the word odor, is surely an ordinary word spelt in the modern way. I am aware that the Americans are trying to change our spelling into rabas of favor, honor, and valor in all that makes life dear to a Briton. But my answer to them is sore visaged Hans, shot not so loudly. We crotch to no prod foemen. This is British grand. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>